there anybody else? Um, so I think that uh, we'll, we'll just look at the end. Take it. I'm going to Good evening, everyone. My name is Julianne, and I'm teaching Green Sleeves tonight. So, um, Green Sleeves is a traditional English folk song from the Renaissance period, and it was adapted into a Christmas carol, which has this, if you know that. It's a good one, and since it's almost getting to Christmas season, the Christmas season, it's a good song to do. So, yeah, can you guys all turn to part three of, in the actual book, like in your books? Turn to part three. And we're going to use 3A. Specifically, so there's a bunch of different ones. I'm gonna we're gonna learn three A tonight. Okay, so if you look at your part three, you see a whole bunch of uh, like arpeggiated things happening. So those are actually all chords in a way. So can you name for me like what chord is happening in the first bar, complete bar? A minor. A minor. And what's the next bar? G, G major. And then the next bar? E. The third bar? C. A minor. A minor again. And then what's in the fourth bar? E. Yeah. And actually that will continue. So we have three chords in total that make up the bass part. So that's, well, it makes up the harmonic structure of the whole piece. But specifically in the bass part, it's A minor, G, and E major. So if you look at the sheet I handed out, can you guys all find that again? And look at the three top things I, I wrote out, the three like threaded things. If you look at it, if you've never looked at this before, how do you read it so you know where to put your fingers on the, on the neck of the guitar is that you have to look at this as the top and this as the bottom. So you have to like twist it like that in your mind. That makes sense. Cool. And can you guys all, uh, so if, let's look at A minor first. Put your fingers where A minor would go. And can you name what, if you were to sound each of the strings, I want you to name what letter name they would all be. So like, what would the top one be? E, because it's open. Then the second string, so like string five. And then string three. E. It would be E with A minor. Right? Good. And then string three, so the next one down. A, and then the next one down, C, and then the top one, C. So if you think about that, it's really all part of the A minor chord. Does that make sense? Okay, then let's go to the G major. So put your fingers in G major position. And what's the top string sounding as? G. G, and then the next string, C, and then the next string, C, and then G, and then C, and the last one, G. Does that make sense, everyone? And then let's do E major. So put your fingers in E major form. Also, if you look at how your fingers are for E major compared to A minor, is, is the there a relation? Yeah. Is it the exact same? What's what's different about it? It's one up. Yeah. Good. So it's the same pattern, like finger positions and everything, just each one string up. So yeah. So what's the top string? E. E. And then the next one. E. And then the next string. Yep, E, and then the next string down. G, G sharp, because sharp. Sharp, it's E major. And because, yeah. And then the next string down. G, e. e, and then the last string, e. 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 So they all spell all the notes, like the notes of the triads. Good. I was just going to ask you one thing. When, they, when you guys are teaching your students, I always say that the shape is really important. Yeah. That's one way to use it, the shape. The shape. Yeah. Good. So let's. Play through the first, so you can turn back to your book now. And so I want you to to think about those chord patterns when you when you are picking through this. So you won't necessarily be playing every note that you have like uh, fingered down on the on the neck, but it's easier to think this way because if the composer had chosen to to um, like put different chords in the arpeggio, then you would already have that basis. If you know what I mean. So it's easier to think of it this way than individual notes. Okay? So let's. I'm wondering what you think if it would be good at this point to just have them go through the pattern, uh, say strumming maybe three or four times and then change the sure. chord. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay, let's try A minor. So everybody find your A minor chord. And we're gonna, we'll do it in, so that 
So one strum per beat, okay? So one, two, ready, and. Good, we'll do four strums, yes. And now let's get into this for G. We'll do four strums for that one. Ready, and. Or would you just 
say those are the chords, but let's just do the notes that are uh, required. Right. So we've got some ideas. Um, I think for beginning bands, because this is a level, it says that this part is a level six part. Yep. I would keep the the chord, like the chord formation, on my left hand because it'd be just easier for them to think about. You find that easier to think about, yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. I was gonna say a lot of people that are coming into a beginning classical guitar, yep. they kind of already have a little bit of a background right. of guitar, more with chords. So I feel like they have a better understanding, knowing chord progressions and having the chord form, right. and then understanding what actual notes they're playing. Yep. Very good. Yep. I think that um, like chord shapes are good. I would just like show the chord shapes and just say like whatever you find is more comfortable because sometimes ah, um, for me, yes. Yeah, so I would let them choose between the two because right. for me the chord shapes sometimes can get a little bit tricky. They physically are more trickier, for sure. Than just doing the single note. Yeah. So I think it depends yeah. on what fits better in your hand. I, think like, that's a good idea, I yeah. play a small instrument, so like I'm used to small things, so switching between those is difficult for me. So I would just do the individual notes personally. Right. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yep. I would also do the individual notes, especially just for this piece, since we're not playing at all. I think it's already a level six to be sending the chords, even if you don't have a background in chord to elevate the key even further. I think he had a really good.
by clapping the rhythm. So it's a six, eight, ten. So how are we going to get, how are we, how are we going to place the fifth note in the entire piece correctly? How, what's the strategy we can use to place that correctly? Fifth, the fifth note. Yeah. Or six. One, two, three. No, five. So the sixth. You could look subdivision. That's what I was for. Yeah, subdivision. Okay. So think of so one, two, three, four, five, and six, and six, and then it'll be on the end. That makes sense, everyone? Good. Okay. Let's just clap it. So you come in on beat six. So I'll count. I won't count a whole bar. I'll just count five. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. at it visually, yep. I was going to say um, let them practice the bar, just get that rhythm in their head, like give them the demonstration and say you see the pattern within the bar and then let them repeat that because it you know, repeats every time except for the one part in um, number oh, five, so five, five six, pattern. yeah, recurring yeah. pattern. Okay, you said something that I wanted to get to, but yeah, go Oh, ahead. I was just saying, for me, um, I noticed especially with like younger kids, yep. if you put words to the rhythm, yeah. they understand that a lot better. Yeah, I, I like so that. like six eight for me if it's just all eighth notes, it's like strawberry, blueberry. And so they understand I that better. Maybe they just get them to sing this. They could, yeah. I mean do they know this to kick an over? Yes. Depends. So that might be one strategy to do. The other one for me is modeling. That's what I was getting after and, and you mentioned that a little bit. Yeah. Is this modeling. Um, I think kids Say, I like Julian's idea of like having it as a visual thing because I remember yeah. when my teacher first did that for me, it was nice. He'd be like, 
Uh, okay, so we're just gonna have a string of 16th notes, but which will be like a fix. And you can be like, okay, so we're gonna fill it out. So say for first one, it was just a quarter note. It's like draw the line and you like, oh, there's four of these, because there's four 16th in a quarter. And then you like add it up. So like, I think the mathematical, like they're both good, right? They, yep. they, they just don't have to. And that's that would bring you to your attention. Yeah, because yeah. otherwise, like, I wouldn't be able to, again, like you said, like, I had something complex in front of me, like, I'd be guessing at the right piece. Right, you know yep. I mean? so. so you can have these little things that's broken. Yeah, that's very good. Okay, and we'll, uh, sorry for breaking your question. You go ahead, Jenny. Okay, um, in part one, before we actually start figuring out the rhythms, I'll, or the notes, I'll let you do that on your own, but there's a couple things I wanted to point out that might help so that some trickier parts. So on the piece of paper I gave you, I added those in. So the first one is bound and measure four to measure five. So the last half of measure four to measure five. It's weird fingering. And I look at that, again, I look at that as an A minor shape. If that helps you, then go for it. But if not, then you can just figure it out on your own. But I found it helpful. I was like, oh, that's just A minor. Like I was trying to figure out the things, but yeah. Very good. Yeah. And then... <laughs> How about the E note, the very first note, and the prior two notes from that? That would be a D major. So just so, yeah, first I was, your, 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 no, that's yeah, perfect. I, was, yeah. I wonder, could you get them to play those solidly? So the, the E note and the previous two notes, the flat chord, okay. and then the sequence after the note. Like in the rhythm of the piece, nope. it, okay. It's a left hand issue. They'll be able to play the rhythm, but this is just a, we're now focusing strictly on. Okay, hand. so let's just figure let's figure out our E major um, position again, so that we can need to look at the piece of paper. And then, um, do you mean just to play the the three notes that are in the <coughs> so like the E, the G, should I the C? Thank you. 
Okay, so we're not actually going to play through just yet. If you guys want to practice, do the finger positions for the A minor and B minor, and then we'll practice switching them together to raise to that. And then we'll, and we're plucking them, not strumming. Somebody tell me what the issue is, will be, um, uh, in that passage that Julian just talked about, between solid chords, the, the full chords, or the baby chords, in that particular context. What, what will be the issue? There is an issue. Somebody find out what it is. Some of you want to play full chords, some of you want to play part chords. Is there an issue that will be relevant between either of those two types of situations? How do you play it? I, I was just going to say, I feel like the G chord out of any of them is the one that feels like you're using a lot of unnecessary fingers. Like yeah. really you just need to have. So let's go through and try it then. So again, go back to those, we'll have Julian play this solid, the, or you know, the E solidly on three, four, three D. Yeah. Then it's strings two, three, and four, right? With your I M P P I M. Okay, everybody got that? Yeah. Okay. So let's just plug that. We'll do eight counts. So like two, one. Okay, one, two. Notice what happens with your the strings that you're plucking. Yeah, they're the same. Okay, we'll do the same thing. So eight counts with those plucking. Okay, one, two, ready, and. Good. Okay, so let's practice switching back and forth. So we'll start with the E for four counts, then the A minor for four counts, E, A. So we'll try switching back and forth. Like I'll play this and, and some of you are doing partial chords, though, correct? I see. And some of you are doing solid chords, as you've decided. You can do whichever you like. <coughs> Who's doing partial chords? Yeah, we have a couple people. Danny and Okay, good. So continue to play those uh, 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 as you like. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do the same, same tempo. We'll start with the E. Okay, one, two, ready. <laughs> shape doesn't change, you just slide it up and down slightly. Let's have Benny do it. Can you show, show them how you were doing it and see if you can, um, like visually, so everybody can see your hands? But he was doing it um, separately, or not separately, as like baby chords. 
I think there's an advantage to doing it this way in this particular case. Can you start for me? Like broken or? Yeah, that's right. Something even more specific that we've talked about. I'm not really fishing much. I want to go facing down. So um, his one finger on the fourth string stays on the fourth string? Yeah, that's the to whole pivot. crux of this. If you play this whole solid chord, you have to move the whole hand. If you leave finger two on E, it stays, it remains for the two chords. It, it, it's going to create legato, right? More graceful. Um, I like the idea of, of, of picturing E and A. Again, that was a great idea. That's good. I think at this point you're gonna let's try it with leaving two on though. Are we talking about part three or part one? We're talking about whatever part you're doing right now. Because this does is one continuing rhythm. Like I'm just using I don't know what it's playing. I just play the same fucking chord. Because that was part three. That was beautiful. Oh, um, I, I yeah, know which one you to play. Oh, oh sorry. That's okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Not that after I'm playing. Well, it, it, it works the same way. Do it as written now, and it will be the I, exact I same thing. Um, the, I'm, I'm talking about the last bar, um, bar yeah, bar four. one, bar four. going into bar five. So, it's like an E major that is kind of the, at the same time as the G major. But that's, that's simply what he just did, which was this. So what do we like to? Um, also, after, so at, when you're going through this, 
look for patterns, and then afterwards I'm going to ask you what kind of patterns you found. So keep that in mind. So go. Like in the melody itself. So. until the end of bar eight, I'll call that the consequent, because it starts, and also you can think of it with the basic idea, it starts out the same way and the last two bars change. Mm -hmm. And then the same thing happens in the, cool. Okay, let's all try playing this together then. I'll go fairly late. Is that a good speed? Or is that too fast? <laughs> that sounds like a good one. <laughs> like she starts so strong and it's just like, oh, I'll be too Bars. 
beginning of bar seven on the C. Everybody know where that is? Beginning of bar seven. One, two, three, ready, set, and ready for it.
important to listen. So obviously, you figure, make sure you're concentrated on your part so that you um, don't get caught, you don't like accept into other people's parts, but don't be secluded in your own part. Make sure you listen to the whole group and see how you fit into everyone else, okay? So that's the point of this. We're gonna see how everyone fits together. Okay, so we'll do the whole thing. Have your own part, and I'll count us in. So there's a pickup, so I'm just gonna count five and then. Yeah. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. I think there's always room for improvement. Yeah. I thought that it was like just pretty decent to the point where if you were to play cards right now, it would still fit in fairly well, as long as you like get their notes in that rhythm. And if you had to up your game in this ensemble, what would that mean? What would you, what would the, your your team have to do to up their game? Don't speed um, up. Okay, I think I would put up. dynamics in because then we could hear like when they have. Yeah, it's like <laughs> having that balance there. I'm sorry. So accenting is that what you're talking about? Uh, dynamic. Dynamic. Oh, okay, so you weren't, you guys yeah. could follow the dynamics that I just said? Yeah, because I, then we could oh, hear. Okay. Yeah, okay, those are two good things. Don't rush dynamics. If you add, like, because it's um, in 6 8 and you feel the two big beats, yep. if you really put an emphasis up doing, like, um, one, two, three, two, so now you're three, three, three um, then it'll help, like, stay together a little bit better if you're yeah. all feeling those big beats there. Those are three very good ones. And that also kind of dovetails because I was thinking with the just the rhythmic alignment was just awesome. Yeah. So, so those are all very good things to go after. Don't let your ensembles. Um, you can get more out of your ensembles. Don't settle for less. Okay. But I mean, for now. I mean, yeah. yeah. It obviously yes, it could have been tighter, but yeah. It's all right. Now we know. I have a general idea of how our parts fit together. So we will put the. The pitches in with it. So we have another round of pitches. Okay. So we'll just play straight through. Yep. Thank mm -hmm. you. 